Right everyone, ready to go. This is Anthony Carpen here at Cherry Hinton Hall, just up the road from home. And it's Folk Festival weekend. Every year for, oh, probably the best part of 50 years, the folk music world has rocked up to this place, Cherry Hinton Hall, which was founded, I believe, by a Mr. Oaks. Um, and they've just gone and named the local sixth form college after him. But it was actually Councillor Mabel Fell who actually got this place um, turned over to the council, to Cambridge City Council. And as a result, we can use it as a public park and also for festivals like this. Now, I'm just about to get my bag searched, so I will see you on the other side. So, 2019, and we are here at what is actually my favourite tent. Um, and I come here um, every year, almost without fail. It's actually quite quiet because it's, it's only Thursday evening um, at the moment. But as you can see, as we were when we had Puffles here, there's lots and lots of wonderful musical instruments um, all over the place. And I think, fortunately, my niece and nephew are now of the age where they can actually play some of these things. Um, so the question is, which one should I get them? And I'm looking down there at the Melodicus, but I actually got one of them um, at one of these earlier, because he's learning to play the piano, is, is Max. But actually it's the violins and the, um, the larger ukuleles that I tend to be on the, um, the lookout for. This is a particular favourite of mine, this bass. Which um, I always thought you played as a normal bass guitar, but as it turns out, um, you don't. You've got to uh, keep it resting on your um, on your lap. Another one of my favourites, again, is just down here, which is a lovely wooden tenor recorder. Now, as I mentioned the last time, um, I made a similar video to this. You see, craftsmanship. I used to play one of those at primary school and the wooden ones have a noticeably different sounds to the, uh, the plastic ones but actually they cost a little bit more. We've got some baby accordions down here and I'm not sure how the sound is coming out on, um, on your side. Normally I bring a proper selfie stick but I couldn't find it um, at this time as I was, um, as I was heading out. And also uh, the stage two over there where we're going to see Ralph McTell um, playing in a bit um, is also in full flow and they've got um, everything open. And one of the things I must also remember to do, and this is what I mean by the various ukes and mandolins and violins that you can see um, all, over the, um, all over the shop. And one of the things that you often get here that you tend not to see in other music shops is the way they kind of like play around with the string so actually what we've got here is kind of like a mandolin style body with your standard six string guitars um, and one of the reasons why i guess i'm interested in this and not least is because um several years ago i saw on ebay um a manda cello and what, um, and again, I'm still looking around. What mando cellos are is they are basically like guitars, but they're tuned to the tuning of a cello, and they have two strings for um, for each note. So you've got two A, two D, two G, and two C strings, and. Um, I think last year was the first time probably ever that I was able to um, to afford one, um, which were extremely difficult to find anyway, <laughs> and so I got it. Um, I just don't know how to play it. So I think um, one of the things I said to myself this year was that I would find um, somebody to teach me how to, um, how to play it. Now, one of the things that I've noticed unfortunately this year is that some of the big bands that I would have really liked to have seen um, come along um, are not here which I think is a real 
shame in a, in a in a in a way it's kind of reflected in the slightly lower um, ticket sales. What I've spotted here, because I've mentioned earlier that Ralph McTell is one of the people who are coming to see this evening, is we've got several of his records down here. Now the thing is with me is the only records of Ralph McTell I really know about is the one from childhood, it's Alphabet 2. So if he doesn't play Kenny the Kangaroo or Victor the Vulture, I'm going to be very disappointed. Um, on the other hand, it's a chance to actually find out what he was, he became famous for in the music scene. So you've got, for example, this one, um, Not Till Tomorrow, um, again by him, slightly older one, down the road, Cannabis Creek. Crikey, from the man who did Alphabet Zoo, singing about narcotics. Who'd have thought it? That must have been where he got the uh, concept of the vegetarian vulture from. Good old Vic. Um, but actually one of my favourite folk bands um, who I first saw, I think it was back in 2004, was Oyster Band. And they played a wonderful Kaylee set. Um, and I've been a big fan of theirs ever since. There's another band here um, called The Unthanks, who several of my friends in the old Dowsing Sound Collective, We Are Sound music group, um, are really big fans of. So I've actually got a ticket for the Saturday as well to, um, to go, and see, um, go and see them. But I guess one of the advantages of not having a really, really big name here compared to perhaps previous years is it forces you to really be on the lookout, sorry, for um, for new and up and coming talent. And actually that's for me as part of the fun. You know, you just you know you don't go along just to see the people you're familiar with, you go along to learn. Um, and it's wonderful that um, a music festival like this turns up at the end of my road every year and has done for the past half century. be finding me buying the clothing though maybe 20 years ago when I was living in Brighton um, yeah it's a really strange anniversary actually um, this autumn coming up because in two months time 20 years ago will be the first time I left home to go to university beer tent and hymns tent but actually what I'm looking for is where am I going to get a water bottle from? And where am I going to get a beer glass from? But, um, again, as is... Ah, there we are. Um, one of the familiar features of the folk festival is this bundle of fun. The Wicker Fox. He's probably got a name as well. I just haven't got round to looking at it. There you go. Fleet Street Foxy. Yeah, oh. no, not really. Um, for those of you who do like to keep up with current affairs, do read Susie Boniface's um, blog and articles in the Daily Mirror. Now, I'm going to see if I can get a t-shirt, so I will see you on the other side. <laughs> 